It's us. It's a different song instead of what you're used to. Do they know it's Christmas? It's a heck I'll tell of a you question, what, Brian. Mother Nature doesn't know. Welcome to the Northland Sports Page. A little different start today. Of course, it's our last show before the Christmas holidays, so the music today is going to be very festive. Of course, you can decide if that one's truly festive or not. But do they know it's Christmas? We do. It's Brian Prudhoe and Dave Cook, although technically it's not. It's December 23rd, but again, by Mother Nature standards, Walking in today, I told you, Dave, I said, if this was April 23rd, I would have bought it. Well, yeah, you said if, uh, you know, if the Saints baseball team had just called and said, hey, we have a game today against but it's canceled X, due to the but rain. it's canceled due to the rain, this would be exactly what it looks like. Absolutely. High 30s, low 40s, a little bit of drizzle. This is springtime. This is springtime. Absolutely. But again, it is the holiday version of the Northland sports page. Yep. Brian Prudhomme, Dave Cook, we are in the Christmas spirit. Yep. It was a very spirited discussion to pick music today because... We always have good musical banter, but who knew, and maybe we did from years past, that holiday music, not that we disagreed, but we get 12 songs in a show, and the highlights of the show aren't supposed to be the songs. It's supposed to be the banter between you and I, but choosing yeah. 12 Boom. was a challenge. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's funny because... And not because there aren't enough. I'm saying our, choosing 12 out of 220 Our was parents tough. are similar in age, like within, yes. within reason, right? And so a lot of the things that we think about when it comes to Christmas music, like we were like, oh, what about this song? Oh, yeah, we listen to that. Who is it? That's I think that's Johnny Mathis. And it's like, should we play Johnny Mathis? And it was like, nobody's. It's like you, me, and your mom. Right. <laughs> My mom doesn't listen. So it's or how about three. how about how many versions of various Christmas songs are out there, as in how many artists did it? Because oh, right. you said Johnny Mathis, and there was a song where I don't think they were exactly the same song. But you could have had Johnny Mathis or Dee Snider. Yes, that's right. Wouldn't that that be was something? an option this morning. We're not going right. to take it. Yes. That's, Sometimes that on Christmas, been, that's how I feel, that but that's a different story. That song at the end of the Grinch movie, if we did it new. There you go. Right? Um, no, I, I 100% agree. And and then we got to talk to the radio station about a lack of some of the songs that we, we are used to. Like, we wanted uh, James Brown, Santa's Got a Brand New Bag, and... Sorry, right. it's not on the list. I was going to say the holiday, the holiday music library is vast here at Town Square Media, but after our review, I came away knowing that it could be bigger. Yes, yeah, uh, absolutely right, absolutely right. But I certainly consider holiday music to be a gift. I don't know about you, but again, the weather's not Christmassy by Northland standards, and that's put a different maybe feel on the holiday season. But I've been way more into Christmas music this year than I ever have before, and I have no idea what the reason might be. Yeah, you know, I live with a person whose Christmas is is the deal, right? So same. We we have Christmas. I married into three hundred sixty five days of it if she had her brothers. Yeah, well, and and truthfully, with the movies Dana likes, it is a three sixty five at our house. There you this, go. This Christmas Chronicles. Do you are have on. stock in the Hallmark Channel? Well, we may as well. Right. But the Christmas Chronicle movie gets played every other like she goes to sleep to it, Brian. So wow. I, I know it pretty well. I do too, but that's more of a problem with the movie, not my obsession with it. But um um yeah, so we went to we. Went went to Bentleyville last night and I do have to tell you that for people that say you shouldn't go when the weather's not great no you need to go it's, it's gorgeous yeah like with the fog last night and the tree the top of the tree was in the fog so you could I mean it's not like you had it perfect but you could when the lights changed you could see it but it also lit up the entire the entire place because of the fog and I was, was gonna amazing. say I never thought of that it didn't take away from it because I know visibility for folks driving last night wasn't the greatest but down in Bentleyville was okay. Oh, it was fantastic. It was so foggy you couldn't see the bridge. Okay. But it was the fog was at the right level that you could see everything at at normal level, but the top of the tree was in the fog. So you'd see the lights go duh, 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 all the way up and then you'd see this boof in the in the fog. It was actually super cool. Right. Plus there's the whole not having to worry about ice and snow to trudge around Bentleyville. And with your physical situation, you're learning Bentleyville the way I've done it my entire life. Yeah. But your torn meniscus yeah. recovery is coming yeah. along. It's coming along, Brian. Uh, you know, like I said, the worst thing right now is a stupid walker. Like, I'm kind of over that. Oh, and by the you way. You know who else said that? Mike Lynn. <laughs> right. Uh, That's a Herschel joke for anybody uh, who missed that one completely. So I've always thought that, you know, I don't understand why the cobblestone streets are such a big deal that... You know, they're pretty to look at. I mean, okay, I know. They're different to move on. I understand. Now. Yep. Yep. I almost went over the top of the walker because the front wheel of the walker got caught in a cobblestone that was kind of twisted a little bit. So what you're saying is you will forever consider your physical mobility a gift. Yes, I will, Brian. All uh, right, because hopefully you're be getting here. that back shortly after Christmas. You well, told me it's progressing nicely. Understand this. 
that twice I've had people that I am comfortable walking with because it's just the way it is. You're one of them. Right. Walk in front of me now and say, so this is what it feels like to be you when you're walking with exactly. me and you're healthy. Well, and I told, did I tell you the story about Jerry at the office? No. Jerry. I have a feeling you're going to tell all of us. Yes. Jerry has a prosthetic. Okay. Um, he had an accident, and so he, he doesn't have his one leg. And he said, you know what's cool? You and I could race. Well, we've said between <laughs> you and I and John Carlson's new hip, the Northland Sports Page slash Prep Hockey 5K, I think I'm the favorite right now. And your wife kind of confirmed it because she was here when I walked in the studio this morning and first thing she said was, well, aren't you just Speedy Gonzalez? And I said, by comparison, right now yeah, I am. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no, we had a thing this morning. So, you know, I have, I always bring the flavored uh, water uh, with the sparkle in it because right. it cleans the plastic of the voice, right? Right. Speaking and, of prosthetics. And yes. And so I had, um, I had it full and I had it, uh, you know, all together. And when I took the walker out of the car, it flopped up in the middle and, and there's this uh, person outside that's having a moment and it flips up in the air and it hits and it explodes. Right. And uh, it, let's just say it attracted the attention of the person who was having a moment. No doubt. There was a lot of cursing across Superior So Street you're saying today. the Coke Zero I gave you was a gift as well? A hundred percent. You know what else is a gift is our family of sponsors because this show is nothing without it. We promise we're the Northland Sports page. We promise we will talk sports, even though we're almost 10 minutes into the show and haven't done it yet. But again, we get to do it because of our sponsors. Yeah, let's start with Mike Regan at Christensen Group Insurance. Uh, Comfort Systems, Kohler to- Hyundai and Kohler Toyota. Oh, that was weird, Brian. I always read it the other way, so I got lost for a second. Kohler Hyundai and Kohler Toyota. Pier B Resort. By the way, they look really good at Bentleyville, they too. They do. Holy cow. Um, Stewart, Spike Sports and Trophies, Mount Royal Bottle Shop, Avenue 45, the Blackwoods Group, including the locations on London Road, in Proctor, in Two Harbors, Blackwater, downtown, and Tavern on the Hill, Sammy's Pizza, Advantage Element Screen Printing, Krause Heating and Cooling, your carrier, HVAC, authorized dealer, OAR Holdings, Hoops Brewing, and the original, Arola Architecture Studio. So again, our sponsors are absolutely a gift to us. It's the only way we get to do this show, and if you haven't noticed... I've made gift references about six times in these opening nine, ten minutes because we are going to do for our first segment today what I basically called on social media the Minnesota Sports Gift Exchange because we're going to talk about gifts that we would give the big four men's teams because the links, not that they should get coal, but they're harder to shop for. What do you get the team that has everything? Right. Well, you know, I think that links, the links would probably tell you they don't have everything. Right, but they have. Yes, they do. They have, and and besides the men's basketball team, they also have, I think, the clearest path to winning. They do. So, because they also have the best coach in the state of Minnesota, in my opinion. Yes, they do. So, what we're going to talk about is gifts that we would give each of the four major men's teams. But then, because it's an exchange, we're also going to talk about the all time greatest gift we feel they've given us. And that was easier than I thought because you could easily look at performances of Minnesota teams. And say, well, you know, PA is going to join us in hour two. He's coined it Loserville, USA. So how many times have they really gifted us? It's pretty clear they have, though. Uh, Or it's clear that we've followed it for a lot of years. Yes to both. I agree with you. I think that the gifts that they've given us, it's funny, though. um, You know, when I was going through this list and thinking about it, a lot of the gifts that that the sports teams have given me is family gifts. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, when we talk about the twins, we'll talk about listening to WCCO right. on Saturday mornings, right? That's the biggest gift they gave me is that time. Uh, so yeah, there's, I mean, but on the field and off the field, sports really impact. Well, and I was going to say, if there's one encompassing gift they've given us, us together, us separately, us with families is banter. Yes. I mean, my goodness, this, this two hour show isn't all professional sports. We know that it's not all professional, but how, well, absolutely. It's <laughs> not all, not any one would argue or two would argue. And the two would be Brian Prudhomme and Dave cook. But you know, how many conversations are spearheaded? I consider sports an icebreaker. That's me. But yep. there are a lot of people that maybe you just met and you go, do you follow sport X, Y, or Z? Do you like team X, Y, or Z? You're fast friends with a lot of people when you do that. Absolutely. Or enemies, but we'll see. Especially when you can talk a little bit about their team. Like one of my cohorts, the guy who, whose cube is right next to me is a Baltimore Ravens fan. And so... So you guys love purple. Uh, well, sure. Um, but it's funny to have to talk him off the ledge, right? Because he's very frustrated. Not this yeah, year. Yeah, very frustrated with the top seeded team. Not, yeah, Not this year, okay. but in the past. You know, he's, he's frustrated with, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's like... Um, 
yeah, no, you guys are okay. Let's talk about this guy. This guy, right. your kicker's good. You just shake his hand and go, Minnesota sports fan. Right. Well, Let me talk to you about what it's like to suffer a little bit. See, that's that's where this this is a gift yeah. that we have is we can go, okay, let's talk about the positive things you have because we don't have any of them. You're Stuart Smalley for him. Doggone yes. it, people like you. Exactly correct. All right, so the good news is this is going to be a really fun topic. The bad news is we have about 18 minutes to do it. So you are guiding the ship or you are guiding the sleigh. You're Rudolph today because you are wearing red. Tell everybody about your T-shirt, though, because I've seen it before on you, and I love it. Yeah, I have I have a resting Grinch face shirt, and uh, not just the shirt you have right. it. But no, <laughs> I'm pretty good at it yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, no, this was the this was the family celebration over Thanksgiving shirt, and it just seemed like the shirt to wear today. I love You're it. You're lucky I didn't wear my striped elf pants because I had them. And Dana am was I like, lucky though? Dana's like, no, you will not wear those out of the house. I would have gone full fledged elf on you if I would have seen that. I would have yelled, Santa, I know him. <laughs> All right, so you're guiding the proverbial sleigh. What team are we starting with? You know, let's start with the most difficult one. I think and okay. that's the wild. All right. Um, so, it was the most difficult, to be honest. Yeah, it's the the. What would you give them? Well, the ease, the low hanging fruits, fifteen million dollars, right? But after the last month, how about a drama free front office? Yeah, um, something that I mean, they made the last five years. If you want to go back to Paul Fenton, uh, that's true. Yeah, we, we've made, but see, Garen had in Bill we trust three years, right? Because everything he did worked, and now we talked about this. We never have known Bill Garen in a situation where things weren't at least winning, like. They didn't necessarily have to be the world's greatest thing, but they were winning. Right. And now when they weren't, geez, we see things cracking at the top. We have to be careful of this. I think that a gift for them would be no drama for the rest of the year and going forward because I think Bill Guerin is very good at what he does, but it sounds to me like his fuse might be shorter than we think when they're losing. I agree with you and ask assistant GM guy that is no longer his right. fuse may be short with a lot of things, but that remains to be seen. You're right. This was the toughest one because... I feel like I took a bit of a low-hanging fruit here because, again, you could offer health to all of these teams because everybody's better with a full-tilt roster, if you will. But assuming that they're in the current injury situation they're in, I would gift them a second defenseman that you can trust because with Brodeen and Spurgeon not totally available, I trust both of those. You don't have them. Right now, I trust Brock Faber and... Half of Middleton. Yeah, <laughs> yep. the middle part. Yeah, Maybe exactly not the ton right. because I don't trust him a ton. So give me another defenseman that you can go, okay, we're going to be okay because he's there. Because back end out, John Carlson might be overseas, but his theory still applies here in the United States. The goalies are fine. They need to be better, but they're fine. The decor that I thought would be so good so quickly has been so worrisome so quickly. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's the veterans that are the problem. Like the kids, all the kids they've brought up are good. Like, I mean, if, if you got Goose, uh, you know, taking penalties that at his experience level he shouldn't be doing, right? And you've got um, uh, the the guy that was good for him four years ago who's been on the bench for the last year and a half. Um, doggone, I can't remember his name. Moving on. Anyways, uh, you know, he's when he hits the ice, Normally he's Normally I'd disaster. help you, but time is of the essence. Yeah, and so call the kids up. You know, let's let's see what the kids can do because they're not going to do any worse. Um, the thing they gave me was pro hockey. Yeah. Like I walked it's away probably from the that sport. simple. Yeah. I walked away from the sport when they came back and they brought Darby and I, I know Darby. And so I was paying attention and now I have a team again. Right. That's a huge factor. Obviously the one outside the box gift I would have given them because I thought we had to watch our own bobber. But if we didn't, I would have gifted them a division where other teams are capable of losing <laughs> because you look at the standings, and you go, the wild have been hot. They got to be moving up. And then you go to find them in the division. Arizona's won four in a row. St. Louis has won three out of the last four. Nashville's hot. And it's like, man, we're just keeping pace with being as far behind as we were. Yes, they're improving, but not by the leaps and bounds you'd think. The gift they gave me is way outside the box, like batteries not included type thing. The building, the X. Oh. And I don't really use it as a wild fan per se, but our favorite part of the broadcast season is what? Yeah. Going to the state hockey tournament. Yep. Yep. The state hockey tournaments existed forever. I enjoyed the St. Paul Civic Center, what have you. But that building hits different. It does. Uh, that's a that's a great pull. Like, I wouldn't have thought of that because, truthfully, what it was, it was the first building that we had that was, like, current. Right. You know, everything else was old. Kept up with the times. Yeah, exactly right. All right, so let's switch. Uh, let's go to let's go to the Timberwolves. How about that? The gift they... So many options here. 
again, it kind of changed during this week because great win against the Lakers. Carl Anthony Towns not playing tonight. You could have said, I'll give him the gift that he's going to be okay. I didn't go there, but what a difference a season makes or two months because we were crying to get this guy out of town. Now he's probably their most important player. Not the best, but the most important. Yeah, he's he's certainly their most important offensive player. And when he plays defense, they win. Like, right. honestly, that's kind of, I mean, Ant does his thing. Rudy does his thing. Conley's kind of the glue. Right. But if Cat's playing well, they blow teams out. So I brought that up, but I didn't shop for them that late. I had a different one, but I'll let you go first. My my guess is I'm going to steal your different one. Okay. Um. So the thing that they need is a true backup point guard. I was going to go there, no, but I didn't. Let, I'm going to let you tell the story. No, it's going to come up and by yourself. So that right. story is going to come up in about an hour. All right. So then I'm going to skip over to what they gave me. Okay. And what they gave me was a reconnection to basketball in the state of Minnesota back when they started. So we brought Mussy back. So you right? kind of gave the Wild and the Wolves gave you the same gift. They got you interested in a sport that had left. It uh, Well, in a me, different way, but, yes, but let similar let me, encompassing let story. So... The t- when the Timberwolves came back, that's when basketball for me really became, oh, let's pay attention to this again. And then uh, Kevin ha- Harlan made it fun, and KG came. and, and You just would, said mine, by the way. And we would talk, Dad and I and, and whatnot would talk about basketball in the day. And so we'd talk about those gopher teams with, um, you know, with all the pomp and circumstance that they used to have. Right. And, and, all, and so it brought the Timberwolves coming back, brought basketball heavy back into my life because dad's a basketball guy, right? No doubt. And so that's that's it. So you brought up mine because it's Kevin Harlan for me. Because I knew at the age of seven, yes, seven, that I wanted to do play-by-play of some kind. I used to do it playing Atari and Nintendo and Sega games. And I just did it up here because that's how I sounded when I was seven. But Kevin we- Harlan came along at the age of 10 to reaffirm that this is what I want to do because this sounds fun and yep. he's getting into it and he's got relationships with cool athletes and he's making it fun for me standing around my rec room or playroom or whatever I was doing at the age of 10. I was probably shooting on a Nerf hoop listening to the Timberwolves and even when they were down and sometimes now maybe we laugh about that like you're down 20. What are you going bonkers for? But back then everything was cool about it. He was the affirmation that yes, play by play is for me. Yeah, no, I, I some agree. would say I'm still not good at it, but he made me want to do it. No, I agree. And, you know, there was a, a broadcast you watched yesterday that should have watched more of Kevin Harlan. So, uh, yes, broadcast. They could have watched more of Kevin fun. McAllister and gotten better. <laughs> That's a Home Alone joke for anybody who missed that one. All right. So let's move along to the Vikings. Well, real oh, quick. You have another one. Sorry. The actual gift that I was giving the Timberwolves because oh, yeah, yeah. it wasn't a healthy towns an engaged fan base with the entire state paying attention. They have a fan base. It just has been small. And disinterested. This year should be neither of those. Right. I don't love the target center, but fill that place up. Nope. I agree with you a thousand percent. The, the thing is, is this is still, you know, D'Angelo Russell did two things for us. One, he got us Mike Conley. Uh, and two, he's the one that called out the fans. And ever right. since he called out the fans, things have been better. Do you stand up at home? Tell our first bucket. Yes. hundred percent. Do you? Right. Because you're it's, lying. It's much You can easier. barely do that right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Dang it. <laughs> Um, all right, I want to go to the Vikings because right. my gift to them is a solution to the quarterback situation. Yeah, that's, like, I don't care that's what the it, easy one, but it's the biggest care, need. I don't care what it is. Yeah. Like they, they, we have no idea who's going to play week to week, let alone who your starter is next year. Right. A simple solution would be great. You know, if that means we lose a little bit and, and we have a shot at drafting one of these college kids, or if Kirk comes back on a contract that we can then afford Hunter, I mean... Yep. Whatever the whatever the story is, there's got to be some kind of solution to our quarterback situation. Yep, that's the easy and biggest need gift, and I don't say that as a detriment to your choice because it's a fine choice because that roster has some talent, but without what you're saying, it's like getting a great gift. Oh, by the way, battery's not included yep. because you got to have something that actually makes it go, and we'll find out what it is. I knew you were going to go that way, so I purposely didn't. It's almost like Am we I hang out easy? once in a while. Jeez. I don't know. I saw your wife earlier today. I forgot to ask, but... <laughs> At any rate, I went more immediate, as in, like, can we open gifts early and have it by, you know, Sunday at noon for the Lions game? I wanted to gift them a legitimate corner over five foot ten. <laughs> because I'm tired of we just talked about the Timberwolves. I'm tired of seeing basketball style throws beat this team. Jump ball is a basketball term. Jump ball is the biggest nightmare for the Minnesota Vikings secondary right now. That's a good team that we're playing then because St. Brown is like 
five eleven. Yeah. And, and, and as much as I've mocked Byron Murphy, Steve Petosian and I have a joke where somebody's wide open. We go, oh, look who was in coverage, sort of, Byron Murphy. <laughs> well, you know what? He's been the butt of a lot of my jokes, but he's not available tomorrow, and that's a problem. Yeah, no doubt. Now all of a sudden, Booth Jr. has to play like an adult. Right. right? And so we'll see how we'll see how that works. My um my thing about Byron Murphy Jr. is it's exactly why the twins shouldn't go deep sea fishing right now for a pitcher. Because the best pitchers aren't the pitchers that you want to spend a ton of money on. Right. Byron Murphy Jr. was the best cornerback available and the bad cornerback for agents. Absolutely. So and you we think we learned him. that because everybody who hates Kirk Cousins, he was the best quarterback in a bad class. We overpaid him too. Yeah. All right. So what did what have the Vikings given to me? They've given me two things, Brian. One. I'm looking at the positive things because I'm thinking, let's see, blood pressure issues, anxiety, but we had to be positive, right? Yeah. Well, no, not necessarily. Um they gifted me the idea that I should not watch a game live because they lose when I watch. And that's a weird thing, but it's also ingrained. They've taught you to do other things on Sundays? Yes. Is that what you're telling me? Truth, the truth is, though, what the Vikings have taught me, the gift they gave me, is the ability to look at um, trade things, right? Like people that talk trades, and remember Herschel. Because I was so excited that we got our well, guy. Everybody remembers you mentioned a stupid walker, and I know you met yours. And what yep. route did I go right away? No, and and not not in the fact that the walker trade was so awful, blah blah blah. But the let's not get too excited. Like take a breath. He he looks like he is good, but does right. he fit in our system? It, it, he helped me look at football as a fan strategically rather than just hey fantasy football guy. Right. So if I went with what did the Vikings give this show? We could give a litany of names that we've met, had on the show, developed relationships with. To be honest, from a professional sports standpoint, the most important team to this show is undoubtedly the Minnesota Vikings. That's where we are the most connected by far. Yep. However, I didn't go that route. I, every time I go down the memory lane with you with professional sports, I become a kid again. I know how infatuated with it I am as an adult. It's it's waning, but it's it's work now, too. So you pay more attention to it to be knowledgeable. Yes, I'm. I'm trying. You don't despite wear, what you've you don't heard wear so jerseys, hard. though. Not as much anymore. They they hang in my closet. I have several. I don't wear as many of them anymore. I I know grown adults that have wildly large collections and sport them all the time. Yes, that's just not me, because then I question the term adult sometimes. But that's a different topic <laughs> altogether. But again, when we talk about gifts given to you by sports teams, I go back to childhood right away. And for me, the Vikings gave me the gift of watching Chris Carter in his prime. Yeah, And for me as a kid, that was a big deal for a reason that you're probably going to understand, but maybe wouldn't have thought of. So when you play sports as a kid, everybody wants to emulate favorite athlete du jour. You know, I'm not the most religious fellow, but I did the sign of the cross before every at bat because Kirby Puckett did it. You know, I, I only could shoot threes as a pickup basketball player because I couldn't move much. So I was Larry Bird all the time. Well, pickup football, Chris Carter will tell you, I never ran full speed because I couldn't be under control. Well, not running full speed should be the title of my sure. autobiography. And the best part about Chris Carter was he could catch anything. My lower body was going to do me no favors. Man, did I do the best I could to be able to have the best hands out there. So the fact that Chris Carter could do those things at a high level, I'm not saying that I was Chris Carter in any way, shape, or form, but there was a relatability that a guy with a disability shouldn't have, and Chris Carter by the way, was a tremendous wide receiver as well. I think he got overshadowed by Randy Moss, even Justin Jefferson now, but Chris Carter was ridiculous. Here's a, here's a little show prep for next year. That's got to be the thing next year, a player that gave you something, because that's a really good story. Like Chris Carter being able to do that. Chris Carter, you know, also gave the gift of redemption. Right. He was the guy who came in full of problems, a drug guy, you know, just – you know, Buddy kicked him out because all he did was score touchdowns, didn't do anything else. And uh, the Vikings brought him in under the wing, and right. he's an all Hall of Famer. I will tell you, this story doesn't have the happiest of endings, though, because, you know, they say sometimes you should never meet your heroes. Well, as a reporter in television, I got a chance to meet Chris Carter just as a locker room reporter at the end, and he walked right by me. And so I shot my shot, as the kids would say today, and I said, Chris, do you have time to chat? And he greeted me with a, hell no, I did all my talking on the field and walked right by me. And you know what? You have every right to do that. But it was kind of like, oh, but, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it wasn't Brian Prudhomme age nine wanting an autograph. It was Brian Prudhomme age 25 kind lacking professionalism, hoping. probably. But yeah, yeah. 
kind of hoping. All right, so let's finish it off with the one that the one that'll probably get us. Uh, the Minnesota Twins. Uh, my gift for the Twins, and I want. I, I think you're probably going to go here, and I, I wish. I, I bet didn't. not because I think mine is. I can't say out of left field because it's not a left fielder, but I think it's different than you're going to assume. But go I ahead. want Royce Lewis for 160 games. Okay, that's that's fair. I wondered if it would be Royce or Buxton for you. I went very different. I want a legitimate setup guy because I feel like Yohan Duran is very, very good without question. I do feel like despite losing Sonny Gray and Kenta Maeda, that this rotation will be okay. They have four pitchers that I believe will have spots that should be good. Maybe not great, but good. They need a fifth starter, no doubt. I'm wondering if Louis Varland is going to be that guy, which kind of ruins it for me because I'm not sure Louis Varland isn't the guy you give the first chance to to be the setup guy because Griffin Jacks, when good, is very good, but there were times where he was public enemy number one last year because, what do you have, almost double-digit losses as a reliever? Thielbar, same thing. And Thielbar is good, but Thielbar is a matchup lefty. Mm -hmm. I know that definition changed with the three-hitter rule, whatever, but he's not a proverbial setup guy. We're going to get through six with these starters. We know who gets the ninth. Your seventh and eighth go where? Yeah, I wrote I wrote some additional stuff and and one was Var, Varlin needs to realize he's an all star bullpen guy. Right, that's that's the gift. He needs to be who because he doesn't need to be Jim Hoey, which is what I'm afraid Thank he's going to no. become if no, he no, implodes. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I'll, he needs to be John Wetland is who is what he needs to be. Um, how about this one, quick Brian? How about the Dodgers realize from Major League Baseball? Major League Baseball decides to in in uh, incorporate the Parisi Suter rule, right? And that at any point during or these, the, have during the Dodgers these things, have the Dodgers been a gift already because they've made the New York Yankees appear to be on welfare? Yeah, well, everybody, right? You know, they they um, I don't say Jimmy the system because there's really no system, but by giving uh, by backloading uh, the guy who can't pitch anymore his uh, his contract. He, they allowed him to to sign the pitcher, right? And so they either figured out a cheat code or Major League Baseball needs to say, hey, look what, that, look what happened to the Wild. We're going to do that to the Dodgers. Right. So what's the gift the Twins gave you? Because you said WCCO on Saturdays. Yeah. And yeah, I didn't think of the sentimental part at first. I, I could go that route where my dad and I bonded over every sport that we both had an interest in, but none larger than the Twins. I didn't go that route, but if you want to, go ahead. Yeah, nope. That's the twins. The twins are where my fandom started, and it started because that's what dad liked, and dad was a baseball guy first, very first. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, we talked as much Cardinals as twins, but on Saturdays when we were doing whatever, Herb was on the radio talking twins. See, now that does segue nicely into what I went with because I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall with you guys in 1987 during the World Series because it's twins, Cardinals, who was happy, who was upset kind of thing. I went with what I think is low-hanging fruit, but maybe some people don't because I do have friends now that are too young to remember or be around for any of this. But the Minnesota Twins proved that winning can happen. They won two World Series by the time I was 12 years old, twice in a five-year span. I thought it was going to become par for the course. This is what we do. Oh, by the way, they haven't done it since. Yeah. But it was super fun as a kid to know the Minnesota Twins were every five years going to give you a parade for a while there. and. And I think I cling to it now too much as a 44-year-old because nothing else has happened of the championship variety sans the Lynx. But when Kevin Garnett won the NBA title in Boston and he said, this one's for soda, anything is possible, we kind of went, yeah, except for here. But then when you look at the Minnesota Twins, it is. Yeah. They taught us that we actually can win. Yeah. It's been a while, but we can do it. Keep the hope going, right? Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dave, all I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> and I hate this song, but it's popular <laughs> enough. <laughs> That's all we want to be here at the Northland Sports page is popular. Our most popular guy is next. Dave Hoop, stick around. We'll be right back. Wow. That is straight no chaser with the 12 days of Christmas. The way they do it feels about as organized as my winter calendar with all the games that we do. Speaking of which, we got one for you this afternoon. It is alumni day for Duluth East Hockey, and they'll host Moundsview 2 o'clock on these airwaves. On these airwaves, and I'm going to make my, my return. The the leg has given me enough okay to uh, to give it a shot today. Absolutely. If we weren't doing holiday music, I would have dragged out Amy Winehouse. They tried to make me go to rehab, and you said, <laughs> no, no, no. You're going to be back in the booth today. We're going to give it a try. Let's it is going to be fun. So Hounds and Mustangs at 2 o'clock from Heritage in Duluth should be a fun one. 
They're probably having fun already with the alumni game. I got to ask if Finn Hoops is playing. If only there was a guy I could ask. You could take a swing. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of different people, but if you're going to find somebody, Brian, try to find somebody as close to the source as possible. Absolutely. So one of our illustrious sponsors is also big into East Hockey alumni. As we go to Dave Hoops of Hoops Brewing, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, guys. I'm actually sitting in the parking lot um, uh, talking with you, and the first game just ended the 2018 and 2020 squad versus the 2019 and 2021 squad. Bunch of the youngsters. The so, uh, old guys are on now. I was going to say, that's funny to me because so is Finn part of the young group then? Because the old guys go back how far? Because I graduated from East in 1997. So, like, Spee and Locker and those guys are older, but Sean Hill and older, there's Phil Ricotta, there's lots of East alumni. How old are we going with this? Old. Uh, 2015 and older is out there now, but, you know, the 91 line is out there together, Locker and Fellman and Jeanette. Nice. They couldn't um, get Rusty yeah, to show up? Yeah. Rusty should have played in this. But Gerald should have been out oh, there. Oh, Rusty's, Rusty's skating. Yep, nice. Um, so the the kids, uh, Finn squad, the 2020 uh, and 2018 won 10 to nine over the uh, the Donovan and and all those guys and uh, Ricky Lyle and stuff. And the first game it was really fun to watch. It was great. And Finn skated with his line like his guys, so they, like the five best friends were on the ice together. It was really fun. That's outstanding. The problem with 10 to nine is Steve Petosa's current club played a game like that on Thursday. They were beaten by Coon Rapids 8-6. to six. Dave Cook, if you love 80s fire wagon hockey, there you go. All right. Well, I, I wonder what we're going to see uh, tonight. Then. That's that's well, what I'm plenty, wondering. Plenty of time for stories during the broadcast. Absolutely. 75 years of East hockey, which, again, mathematically never added up for me because I thought, wait a minute, East became a high school in 1950. I'm not great at math, but 50 plus 75 puts us in 2025 already. But... They had a club team initially as well. So the alumni ceremony, the alumni festivities should be fun today. Hopefully the Hounds can beat Mounds and get back on the winning track. Speaking of getting back on the winning track, the Vikings and gut-wrenching losses are basically synonyms. But last Saturday against the Bengals, for as many as I've seen, that one really stuck with me as how did we manage to lose that? So I call upon Dave Hoops, who is my fountain of optimism all the time, to give me optimism going into the Detroit game tomorrow. Uh, I'd love to. You know, I, I want to, a couple words about last week. Um, you know, that was that was terrible and tough to take, but I was so completely certain um, that, you know, the game, that they had this game, it was going to be fine, even if they give up a, a touchdown. I'm talking to my friends. I'm not even paying attention. Uh, you know, it's uh, third and fourth down. A couple. Of, we all know what happened. Right. Uh, you know, this is the first time in a long time that I've been concerned about uh, oh, Kevin KOC because uh, you know there's about a hundred plays they could have called to get that first down. So I'm not going to be negative at all. It's just that they it, this happens to us, and now we have to beat Detroit today tomorrow. Um, and we all know what the what's at stake. A win tomorrow, pretty much, they're going to make the playoffs, right? I mean, more or less. Um, so my optimism is that the Vikings' run defense will step up because Detroit is really nobody's talking about it. At least I'm not hearing it. But yeah, they're a great passing team, but they're running. You got you know this, you right? Do. They're, they're they're a great running team. Gibbs and so Montgomery are that defense. good. Yep. Yep. So I, I think it's I you know I think it's going to be a fairly tight game in in the twenties, um, and maybe the Vikings win by four. But um, of course I'm going to say that. But I'm also, <laughs> what do you guys think the chances are they're going to play the first week of the playoffs as well? Same teams, pretty high, right? Uh, at this point, I don't really know what to say because I think a lot of it stems on, of course, tomorrow. But I feel like the bigger one, not to look past tomorrow at all, but. If you find a way to squander a New Year's Eve opportunity against a Green Bay team that's been up and down at best, then you're really in a tough spot. I want to say the Vikings will be a wild card team, but Saturday to me put them behind the eight ball. It, it truly did. I mean, and it exposed, again, what's the weakness right now in this football team. You know, it exposed the quarterback position again. And so um, in, in, order to beat, in order to beat Detroit, Mullins is going to have to be on, like on. Well, and that was going to be my next question or at least comment or topic for Dave Hoops because 
Nick Mullins, to me, yes, he had some head-scratching, face-palm moments. The second interception, I actually think it takes a tremendous amount of talent to be able to turn that into an interception, talent being sarcasm-laden. But how did Nick Mullins make you feel? Because the offense looked functional, and that was important. That's something we hadn't seen in a couple weeks. I, I think that functional, that's a great way to put it, Brian. I think that he, he kind of showed up and sort of almost got the job done. And, you know, at the level, I'm not afraid about him tomorrow playing. I'd like to see the rookie play. But, you know, maybe, you know, obviously a loss would probably cause that to happen. I was just going to say, I, I wonder like if they don't win tomorrow. That. Yeah, I think you're spot yeah. on. I think if they don't win tomorrow, you might see those last two, even though not mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, you might see those last two be handed to Jaron Hall. Yeah, I'm I'm not a Mullins uh, slammer, and I think he's functional, and he's probably going to play slightly better. And you know, the, the, that's a team loss. I, I, you know, he didn't do great, but he he wasn't horrendous, right? Right. You and know? with QB one on the shelf for several weeks now, I feel like that's where the expectations have gone. We've gone from wanting elite quarterback play because of Kirk Cousins' price tag to loving Josh Dobbs for mobility to wanting to send Josh Dobbs on a one-way trip back to space, to <laughs> now hoping for functionality at the quarterback position. I understand why. It's just humorous to me to, to watch the instant gratification that is the NFL week to week for this fan base. Well, you've talked a lot, Brian, about wanting... I've uh, talked not, a lot, period. I'm not sorry. understanding why people don't like Kirk Cousins. Well, I think there's a lot of people that have changed their mind over the last month. Yeah, I've tweeted as much, where if you still don't like Kirk Cousins now... I want to congratulate you on a stubborn, well-kept agenda. Because if you don't want to watch and just stick to your guns, more power to you. But at the same time, this team should be clamoring, you said, for an answer for next year in the future. I'm not sure in the immediate future it isn't just Kirk. I've, I've said it might be all along now. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, but if it is, then you have to have – he's not a long-term guy anymore. Now, right. So the solution needs to be draft somebody you think can be a starter or if it's Jaron Hall – Bring Cousins back for a year. At a discounted price, please. 100%. It cannot be. If, if he wants 40, he's got to go someplace else. Right. Because he's not going to have a roster around him. It's going to be worth a darn. Because you all. still need to give Justin Jefferson, albeit an injury plague season, whatever he wants. Bring the Briggs truck in. And feel free to notice that Daniil Hunter has found Daniil Hunter again and, and pay him. Or did Brian Flores find Daniil Hunter? That's fine. Right. And figure it out one way or gotta another. Got to have them both back. You may guy. have neither one. Wow. Think about that for just a second. So lots of questions going into next year for the Vikings. We're not there yet, but it is time for more questions because the best ones for these segments come from Dave Cook. All right. So I just told Brian in the break what's going on on the 27th. My darling wife is purchased uh, talking buttons for the dog. So the dog is going to be able to, we are going to teach the dog how to, when he wants to express himself, go to the button that has the word that he uses to express himself. So if he sees Dana, there'll be a button there that says mom, and he can go and push the button and it says mom. Because wow. he's smart and can talk now. How well is your life going that this oh, is a priority for you guys? I don't even. <laughs> what I want to know from you guys is what button would you love your dog to have? Like if you, if you were going to do this and there was one talking button that your dog was going to, and keep it clean because we're on the radio. Right. Uh, I was going to say, I have to rethink. Thanks yes, to the FCC. Yes, yes. And you have two dogs that are very active yeah, and I'm yeah. very interested in that. But Dave, if you if, if your dog was able to talk using a button, but only one button and only one word, what word would you love your dog to be able to say? Um, let's go for a run. That's what I'd want. I, I'm not sure about this button thing. I'm listening to it. I wish my dog could talk. I talk with him quite a bit and he knows some English. He's He's rudimentary. But, um, you know, I never know exactly, you know, obviously all dogs want to go for runs all the time, right? Well, at least the ones I know. But I would like it a lot if, you know, he had a button that actually got me motivated as well because we were going out once or twice a day, right? And it would be better if his schedule worked out, like if I understood his schedule. That would be helpful to me. All right, so I'm going to give two options because I have two dogs, but it doesn't vary by dog. So the one that I would give them both would be a button that when they pushed it, it said intruder. Because (laughs) then I could actually assure them, no, no, it isn't. Because, you know, dogs do this. They bark at every person, place, or thing that come near your doorway. My dogs, unfortunately, are the best at that. 
I feel like every DoorDash delivery person has had their life flash before their eyes because my dogs pounce near the window. Now, mind you, they're about 40 pounds a piece. So they're not going to hurt anybody, we don't think. But at the same time, it is a very loud living room area for us, Jen and I, on the regular basis. So if they had a button that they thought there was an intruder, and I'm assuming that they could understand my response, I could say, no, we're good. They're safe. Button. They can be here. Maybe the barking would stop quicker. The other one, I work from home. And sometimes the dogs are locked up while I work. Sometimes they're running around out and about. Depends on the time of day. I feel like Kirby especially would want a button for me and Aaron Rodgers would like this because it would be relax. Because I feel like there are times where he wants me to play, but I'm working. He'd want to push the button, relax or break. You know, <laughs> take a break, play with me. I feel like those would be the options. I, I, still, I told Dana there's three, but the last two I really can't utilize on the radio. But the first one is I, I would love to have a button of, for Frankie when he's listening to somebody and he doesn't know what they're saying that just says, um... Uh, I would like that button. <laughs> there are times during broadcast where I think I would do that. All right. So this is the question I was asked, guys, and, and I really I appreciate this question. All right. So we've talked in the past about favorite Christmas movies. We've talked about favorite, Chris, favorite Christmas characters, so on and so forth. Here's the question. Let's take those star characters out. Like, you, you can't vote for Buddy the Elf here, right? And you can't vote for Chevy Chase and Christmas Vacation. Secondary, the your favorite other characters from a Christmas movie. Um, the answer that I was given by uh, a friend of mine was the toys on the Island of Misfit Toys. So that kind of character. So gentlemen. Like the dentist guy in Rudolph? Yes. What is, who is, uh, or I guess what is works as well, your favorite non-star, non-headliner in a Christmas movie? That's easy. Heat miser. Every, oh, all I time. love it, Dave. There you go. Well, That's a his, good one. His, his brother is not as good. Heat miser is just, he's must see TV as far as, you know, uh, or the, um, the, the, the bad guy, uh, I can't remember his name, the Russian, oh, you know, that Santa has to overcome, but I'm going to just go with heat miser because I can't name, come up with the other guy's name. Sorry. That's pretty good. I'm going to give you two. One is animated, one is human. The animated one would be the Grinch's dog, Max, because my dog, Tucker, we have an antler that we put on him, that he's a dead ringer for Max, and Max is so expressive in the Grinch that it's outstanding. Now, technically, if you're saying which Grinch, it doesn't have to be animated, but I like that one best. The human, you said you can't vote for Chevy Chase in Christmas Vacation, so I won't, but I will 100% vote for Aunt Bethany who wraps up things from around her house. You know, she wrapped up her cat and put it under the tree as a gift. Uh, she does the Pledge of Allegiance. She doesn't know that grace is a blessing. She says grace has been dead for 30 years. When it comes to quotable Christmas movies, Christmas Vacation is at the top. And for me, Aunt Bethany is why. The um, nice. the, the couple that come to mind for me is in, in Elf, his his new brother, the little guy with the snow fight, snowball fight, when they are throwing snowballs at each other when they first start to connect. Uh, I love the little brother uh, there. Um, but I was thinking about Die Hard, and the guy who played Professor Snape in Alan Rickman is the bad guy yeah. in Die Hard. And his over-the-top accent to be the stereotypical 1980s villain bad guy uh, is fa a fantastic role of his. Real quick, what I should have said to cater to my audience, Dave Cook loves Bad Mom's Christmas. I should have said the little girl that says, oh my yep. God. Because <laughs> that's my favorite line in Christmas movies, uh, maybe ever. Ever. Maybe yep. ever. Yep. Do you have more? Or are we good? No, that's, I had two, and I thought that I thought the last one was fun. All right, I'm going to close with one real quick for you two, because it's been a debate all week, and I'm so tired of it. But then I thought, you know... It's not that different from something that we've debated on this show. New uniforms have been a topic. The twins came out with theirs last year. We we didn't love them. We didn't like them. We didn't hate them. They grew on us. The stadium series for the wild, I didn't like them because it focused on the metro area. Debating uniforms in sports is fun. But then I see the state flag debate going on this week, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, why do people care about this? But then I wondered... When people hear our jersey debates, do they think the same thing? My question is, do you guys eye roll this state flag debate? Because 
I would love to never see the debate again. Who cares? Dave, I'll let you go first. Well, you know, Brian, you're right. I I don't. Um, I, I guess the only thing that I was think, thinking, well, there's a lot of blue in there. It'd be cool to have to see some green. Right. But uh, I don't at all. Um, but I am interested in sports uniforms because. Exactly. Um, and that's just because they're much more important to me, which says a lot about no, me. No, I, I agree. Guess. But my, my point was this. We can debate those just as I guess the folks that debate the flag can do that. But in the end, we don't care as long as the performances are good. Same with the state flag. If Minnesota is in a good spot in a number of ways, I don't care what the flag looks like. So here's my take. And understand that I've had my daughter, the director of inclusion and accessibility at St. Cloud Tech College at home, right? So we've been talking about these things. Uh, the fact that the flag is a problem for some people, it's like jerseys. You don't like the jersey, who cares? Change it. Right. Like the flag means... Well, the fact that it's the a problem... The flag doesn't mean anything to me, so The fact change that it's it. a problem is weird, but the fact that people puff their chest out about how great it is is also weird. Yes, exactly. And so, right. who cares? Like, honestly, did if we didn't have a flag for our state, would it matter? No. No. Did and you so remember we had one want. until this week? That's a great point as well. But I got to remember that today's the last day before Christmas to get to hoops for any beer that you need. You're closed Christmas Eve and Christmas... Dave, tell all the folks good reason to get there today and hurry. Well, cherry, 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 and yesterday was just unbelievable as far as people uh, stocking up. And then we also have a couple of brand new beers. I mentioned Fancy Lager and Smoked Half might not sound good, but it is ridiculously good. And so I would highly recommend that. And yes, we got, we'll be closed the next two days. And Merry Christmas to everybody out there listening, and and a Happy New Year and all that other stuff. I get to talk with you guys next week. I get it, but. I hope everybody has a really good few next few days. Absolutely. You Merry Christmas well, to friend. you. We Merry have Christmas. one more show in 2023, so we will talk to you. We'll do Happy New Year next week. But Merry Christmas, and thank you again for your time. Yeah, thanks, guys. Have a great uh, afternoon uh, broadcast today. Go East. Absolutely. Should be fun. That's our guy, Dave Hoops. We appreciate him. we got to get to Alicia Tipke. She's driving home for Christmas. She's going to pull over and take our call. Stick around. We'll be right back. I know you're confused. We'll talk about it when we come back. Our holiday edition of the Northland Sports Page continues. All holiday music throughout the show. Little Santa baby. Hopefully he's bringing us something nice come Christmas morning. Heading home for Christmas is important too, though. Our next guest is going to be doing that here today, but we caught her while she's still in the Northland. Speaking of the Northland, they have blessed us with many great sponsors. Dave Cook's going to tell you about them. Absolutely. Let's start with Kohler Toyota and Kohler Hyundai. Comfort Systems. Mike Regan at Christensen Group Insurance. Arola Architecture Studio. Hoops Brewing, OAR Holding, Krauss Heating and Cooling, your carrier HVAC authorized dealer. Brian, I was at East this week presenting uh, trades to kids at East. So you may want to revise that. You're at Duluth East because I know going to the yes. break, Dave Hoops confused you because he said, have a good broadcast today. Go East. I was like, and you said, well, wait a minute. We got to go the other way to get to the building. Right. That's go West. Right. So Duluth East is important. So we were at Duluth East on Tuesday and we were talking with Krauss Anderson. We brought Krauss Anderson with. Right. And they were talking about how houses today and buildings today are built tight is what they call it, which means there's no airflow in or out because they're trying to conserve heat and whatever. And how important HVAC has become in the world of housing. Like it's always been important to have an air conditioner, right? But to actually have homes now like they're being built, the opportunities to work in HVAC are going through the roof. And if you have a tight home, where better to buy an HVAC unit than from Krause Heating and Cooling? Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing, Sammy's Pizza, the Blackwoods Group, including their locations up on the hill and Tavern on the Hill, Blackwater Downtown, in Two Harbors, in Proctor, on London Road, Avenue 45, Mount Royal Bottle Shop, Stewart's Bike Sports and Trophies, and Pier B Resort. Absolutely. We love all our great sponsors. Town Square Media is blessed with some great partnerships as well, WDIO being one of them. And our next guest, we were blessed with a partnership with all the way back to her student days at the College of St. Scholastica. Yeah, when she was a kid. Right. A kid kid. We always say this because it's still true. We get to say we knew her when because WDIO Sports Director Alicia Tipke joins us now. And Alicia Tipke, good morning. Thanks for taking time before you head out for the holidays. Good morning, and thanks for having me as always. Always a pleasure, and we talk about taking time. The winter sports season doesn't allow you for much, but you said something on the news the other night that was so perfect because – Justin Lyles was just talking about how this isn't winter at all, and they were pitching to you, and you said, well, guess what? In the sports world, it still is. 
Yep, absolutely. <laughs> we are full of basketball and hockey and boys swimming and everything you can think of wrestling under the sun. We've got it all going. So it definitely feels like winter to us. Well, and besides that, you were at a pretty big signing day earlier this week as well. You were at the big Koi Parrish decision, and everybody in Minnesota was mortified that it was going to be a different decision than what was out there for months and maybe even a year before. But he's staying home, quote unquote. What was that atmosphere like? Yeah, absolutely. That was a fun one. They had announced officially earlier that he had chosen to stay with Gophers football and PJ Flex team, but it was still so exciting to be in the Esco Theater there. They had signs and lights and everything to celebrate his commitment to the Gophers, staying hometown boy, Division One, which is huge, but it was also exciting. They were able to set up a Zoom call with PJ Fleck and some other Gophers coaching staff, and he was very grateful to have been able to keep Koi uh, as one of their safeties that are coming in to their class and he couldn't have spoken higher to to Koi and uh, he even mentioned to Mason to thanks for helping him keep his talents in Minnesota so it was really fun to see so many people come out there and want to support him and the Esco football program too and uh, Coach Arnson said you know I, I it was all me <laughs> right <laughs> Scott's so humble, right? But actually, he is. He's yes. one of my favorite people it's, in sports. No, it's, it's really he interesting. Is, of course, of course, teasing, but absolutely wonderful support system he had there. Fun to see him go to the Goats. If you are a safety, a young safety, and you want to get into the NFL, I mean, the Gophers are their last two strong or free safeties are in the NFL, well, will be when Newbin's drafted. Right. Don't worry about getting in a good bowl or finishing over 500, but if you want to play the next day later in your career, it's not a bad spot. At safety. Right. right? That's That's absolutely. the spot to go. So, Alicia, we were talking a little bit about uh, how busy winter is uh, as far as, you know, in your role as sports director at DIO. And uh, I'm wondering two things. One, you know, Brian and I, we sometimes can't figure out what day it is because of how busy it is. And I'm wondering, Mm -hmm. now you've got a couple days off. How are you going to, how are you going to, Relax. I mean, is there any point of view that's going to say, how does a sports media yeah. member relax? Because Dave and I don't know how. Maybe you can tell us. Right. I can't believe you're going to be at home and not go, okay, so it's it's nine o'clock now. I have to leave at noon because I have to be in wherever at one. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Let's see. I'm going to go with watching football all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that. I get that question a lot, too. So you work in sports. Do you really watch it that much when you're not working? Yep. I think for you, it's just like us. The answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it is uh, it is a little tough to relax, but the perfect thing about holiday breaks is a lot of other people take them too. So the schedule is pretty clear, which is able to clear my mind. There is nothing wrong with that. That's a That's superb a answer. Yep. We talked to Derek Montgomery last weekend, and I'm not sure if you know him or not, but he's a very busy sports photographer, and there are a lot of those as well. But, you know, similarly, you guys are doing that, obviously, with video footage, and we talked to Derek about best sports, best places to shoot from a photography standpoint, what about from a video standpoint? Do you have some buildings that are better than others and some that are more difficult that stick out? Absolutely. <laughs> um, on the more difficult side of things, I can go with Hermantown Hockey Arena. The atmosphere is superb, but that also causes for some difficulty in shooting over people. Um, there's not like a high bird's eye view perch in that location, but I always love the atmosphere there as for, um, a place that provides really nice lighting and really good footage. Um, I'd say St. Luke's arena for hockey. That place is really good. Just thinking of, of hockey. Um, but when it comes to places like basketball, Blue East is, is pretty good, um, but yeah, there are definitely the places for hockey where it, there's the walk around are the easier places for sure <laughs> than I'm, the places where you're kind of shoved up against the wall. Right, right. Now, I'm a little disappointed she didn't talk about the atmosphere at Duluth East being out of sight as well. I heard the announcer's at least okay, but you know, we talk about that Alicia Tipke has known us, you know, since she was just a kid at St. Scholastica. Um, it sounds like she's she hung out with us either. It sounds way. like she's hung out with us though, because her pros and cons of of buildings similar Very to what we've similar, said. Yep. It's outstanding when it works out that way. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about, I know the Christmas holiday is first before New Year's, of course, but a lot of media outlets are putting together you know, their highlights for 2023. We're going to do ours in a couple weeks. We're going to let 2023 have its very last day, and we'll do our top 10 moments come January. 
but I know from a WDIO standpoint, you're you're probably putting your end of the year stuff together. If you think of, and this is tough on the spot to think of, you know, twelve months in about twelve seconds. But when you think on the spot, what are some of the moments of 2023 that you witnessed in sports, professional or local that you think that's unforgettable? Absolutely. Well, off the top of my head, I've got to go with the UMD women's basketball NCAA Agreed. championship run. Um, to see them win that Central Regional Tournament um, was absolutely amazing. And then to get to go down to Dallas and watch them you know, run Ashland close to the end of that was, was absolutely amazing. And to listen to the words that these women had to say and making history right in front of your eyes, that's that's a that's a pretty hands down one for me. I think Brian that Alicia's going to need to come in here when we do ours and steal some of the ideas that we have. Well, she I should was, come here and film it so then she can run it as hers as well. See, now I was afraid of vice versa because a lot of media outlets do it just as the year is ending. You and I being on once a week, we're going to do our top ten for twenty twenty three on January 6th of 2024. So we'll have It'll to be f- nice to have January 6th remembered for something good, though, but I digress. Oh, I didn't even think about that, but right. I don't even go there. Right. But the, um, yeah, because I think that it would be a synergistic thing. I just hopefully it coined would. that phrase. I think that's the nicest way that Dave's asking you for help, Alicia. What do you think well, of that? Maybe. <laughs> you know what? I say we collab. You guys talk about it. I show the video of it. There, there you it go. Is. There you go. That's a uh, radio could be a visual medium. Thanks to that. What about things you are looking forward to in 2024? We talk about the state hockey tournament is always so big for everybody. You know, the winter sports season is easily the busiest of fall, winter, spring. And then the way that they kind of reach their climactic moments at state are always things we look forward to. But is there something else for 2024 that sticks out? Because I'm going to go off the beaten path a little bit. It doesn't look like winter outside, but I'm already looking forward to summer because I want to see what Harbor Monsters football is going to look like as something new to Duluth. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, I we you know we always look forward to the state hockey tournaments. Um, just us hosting the section tournaments um, on WDIO, getting the stand between the glass. That's always a highlight. But off the beaten path, I'm kind of looking forward to the spring sports season because if this winter stays as mild as it is, we're actually going to be able to get teams outside on their home right. diamonds. Whereas we did not get that opportunity last year, looking at some of the schools, they had like three home games or something like that over a three month season. So I'm really looking forward to teams being able to get outside and get full seasons at home in the Northland, not having to go down South to play. I think that's a good poll because when you first said it, I almost interjected because you said you were looking forward to the spring sports season. And I said, you mean actually having one because that's been Mm -hmm. the challenge the last several years. How about the challenge for you of, you know, you're you're certainly not an elder statesman when it comes to age, but all of a sudden in media circles in this town, you've been around a while. Is it a bit of a challenge being a teacher rather than the one that's been taught? Because, you know, the Chelsea Browns of the world, they're they're still succeeding, you know, but I'll be in an Iowa now. And instead of student, you are the teacher. How has that felt? You know, it's really fun to be able to pass down all the knowledge. You never really notice how much you have until you're able to share it with others and it's been fun to you know have two new people under me and be able to share my you know wisdom for lack of a better word with them but it's fun you really learn how much you know you get to know the history of these teams and the coaches and when you hear a name you know that that matters and that means something to the people you know Chisholm basketball just celebrated their 1973 state championship team and it's fun to be able to share and say hey you know basketball is deeply embedded into the blue streaks history like this matters to the people who live there and to be able to share that with them and talk about the history of the hockey tournament and what it means when a team like war comes to town and you know why that's a big deal so that's been really fun that is awesome. That really puts it in perspective when a Stillwater pony has spent enough time up north where she becomes the historian. It's kind of fun. It's true. It is and very true. My other major was history, so there you go. That is helpful as well. Shout out, hat tip to the College of St. Scholastica and the educational value they brought you. You've brought us a lot of value over the years. Want to wish you a Merry Christmas, of course. Got to get one more yeah. thing from you. Vikings, Lions, Christmas Eve, who wins by how much? Let's see. Um, I'm going to have to be a homer on this one. We're going to go Vikings and let's do um, 14 to 7. (laughs) 
<laughs> Just when I thought I couldn't love you anymore, here we are. Have safe travels back yeah, home. Have a very safe. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Thank you very much to WDIO's Alicia Tipke. Radio is not a visual medium, except when we get the TV. You know, I always forget she's from Stillwater because right. she spent so much time here and we've known her since she got to campus. It feels like she's been in Duluth, well, our whole lives. Absolutely. She's been a big part of it. I'll tell you what, who else has been a big part of this show? Mr. Paul Allen. He kicks off our number two when we come back. Stick around. We'll be right back.